Stay tuned for sci-fi character design from both an artist and writer's perspective and a sneak peek at one of my novels in progress. Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today's video is part of the Art Addicts Alliance monthly upload for March. We are a group of art channels here on YouTube who upload on the third Friday of every month with artwork recreated around a single common theme. This month's theme is science fiction, and I truly can't wait to see what everyone else decide to do. Be sure to check out the other channels if you haven't watched their videos already. I'll have everyone linked in the description and in the pinned comment. We're currently 8 permanent members with room for 7 more. If you're interested in joining the Art Addicts Alliance and you're an art channel with at least 100 subscribers, all you have to do is make an unofficial video using our current theme or one of our recent past themes and send it to us on Facebook as your audition. If you'd like to help us pick next month's theme, the poll is also link down below. It's currently a pretty close race between three of the four options, so we could definitely use as many votes as we can get to help determine the winner. The time-lapse footage you're watching right now is a watercolor and ink background I made to photograph my characters against, just for more interest. I'll let it play while I give a rundown on the novel these characters come from, and some relevant information on the species, so that what I say when I talk about the characters makes sense. Designing a species or a culture if your characters aren't human is definitely an important step before you design individual characters, but if you're really only here for the character design aspect, go ahead and jump to the timestamp on screen in just a minute. Copyright notice, the species, characters, and plot points I'm about to discuss are my own invention and I do intend to publish. I have plenty of dated and documented proof that these are mine, so potential story thieves, beware. These are not the low-hanging fruit you seek. This story begins on the planet Eloidia, an ocean planet with a tiny pair of barely conjoined continents just south of the equator. The climate and flora on these continents are that of a temperate rainforest, similar to but slightly warmer than coastal British Columbia and Washington. There are many birds birds and insect species, but very few non-avian land-dwelling creatures, save for the plant's intelligent species, the Eloi. Eloi are three and a half to four foot tall, vaguely humanoid mammals evolved from something similar to the earthly marsupials known as sugar gliders. They live in clan-based tree-dwelling society, where everyone either takes on a role in clan life and perpetuates the species and society, or removes themselves from clan life in order to study and take on higher professions. Eloi culture centers around the fact that they reincarnate. Almost every Eloi remembers at least one past life, and every adult Eloi carries a soul name and title. Eloi children complete basic education in their clan's school until the age of 12, at which point they embark on a year of discovery. During this year, they are meant to explore the memories that have surfaced of their past lives thus far, and use this information to figure out what they should do with the rest of this life. Some remain in their home clan during this year, while others travel to places that feel more familiar to their soul. At the end of this year of discovery, at age 13, young Eloi participate in a naming ceremony, during which they announce to their clan recorders their soul's name and their soul title. Every adult Eloi, with the exception of those holding the title New Soul, has a four-word name, and New Souls have a three-word name. The first word is their birth name, the name given to them by their mothers in this life. The second word, which is absent from New Soul names, is the soul name, the first birth name this soul ever received. The third and fourth words of the names are the soul title. Clan recorders report births, namings, and deaths to the government recorders at the Continental Universities, and it's those recorders who manage soul record-keeping for the entire species and keep the Book of Lost Souls. All Eloi who have memories of at least one past life receive the title Old Soul unless they qualify for a more specific title, and all Eloi who have no past life memories receive the title of New Soul. An old soul who has clear memories of many past lives is a wise soul, and these individuals tend to take on recorder positions and other roles of high esteem. They also seem oddly more likely to be reborn into the same clan over and over, with very little time between death and rebirth. Old souls with scattered memories of only a single past life, particularly if records show that there was a significant gap between their last death and their rebirth, are called wandering souls, because these souls are believed to have taken its time wandering beyond. Some suspect that these souls are not as tightly bound to the planet as others. Wandering souls are more likely to become lost souls and are rarely reborn to the same clan as their previous life. 
Souls are recorded in the Book of Lost Souls if 100 years has passed since their last recorded death. If an Eloi names themselves with a soul that has been recorded in the Book of Lost Souls after this point, then they are titled Awakened Soul. Eloi society is hotly divided on the opinions of new souls. Some believe that these individuals are awakened souls who were gone for too long to retain memories and treat them no differently than anyone else. Some believe that their clan has been blessed with the care of a truly new soul and sees these individuals as something to celebrate. Some suspect that new souls are simply hiding their identity in hopes of having a fresh start. Execution for high crimes is acceptable and commonly practiced among the Loy society because it is believed that individuals who are not happy productive members of society are souls that are born into incompatible bodies. The soul and brain's chemistry don't mix, resulting in someone who experiences mental illness or someone who maliciously disrupts society. Ending that life releases the soul to be reborn, potentially into a more compatible body. Unfortunately, there have been a few recorded cases of formerly executed souls maliciously announcing themselves as new souls to escape the stigma attached to their soul name, so the portion of society who looks down on new souls as potential cons feels righteous in their discrimination. At the beginning of the novel, the Aloy are about to send some eager new astronauts on the first manned spaceflight beyond their solar system, and it has been decided that the crew should only be comprised of new souls. There is a fear that sending souls so far from the planet could break the soul's tie to Elodia and trigger them to become lost souls, so the powers that be are unwilling to risk any old souls. The main characters this novel spends the most time with are the three Eloi chosen to crew this first space flight beyond the solar system. Our protagonist is Klika Nusol. She's a fairly average looking Eloi woman with green eyes and a typically filled in black forehead marking. Since the species is based on sugar gliders, I've kept the sex linked forehead marking marking that sugar gliders get. Male sugar gliders develop a paler patch, sometimes called a bald patch, in the middle of their forehead marking. All of the shapes and angles on her face are rounded to give her more of a feminine appearance, and I've taken care to make sure that her mouth shape and markings give the impression of a smile. She's a warm, kind personality, so I chose to give her a warm gray coat color. She's the main character, so I chose to give her more intricately detailed facial markings for added interest. Klika grew up in the Red Tree Clan on the Western Continent. Her mother is Kurasal Wandering Soul, and her father, who I haven't named yet, is an old soul with a prejudice against new souls. Growing up, she was closest with her grandfather, a wise soul, who encouraged her to seek a professional life. Maybe he was trying to save her from prejudice if she chose clan life. Maybe he had a suspicion that her soul status would actually give her interesting opportunities. Either way, she chose education and entered the Space Exploration Vocational Program at Westland School. She has a soft spot for birds and enjoys braiding her own colorful jewelry, even though she's not allowed to wear it when on duty. Students who complete their vocational training become student employees of their faculty and enter a sort of holding pattern until their career position becomes available. At the beginning of the story, Klika is 22 and has been waiting for her career for four years. She's optimistic and, being a true new soul herself, gives all the new souls the benefit of the doubt and assumes that they are also genuine. She's selected as crew leader and holds a few other key roles and skills specific to the goals of their mission, which I won't reveal in this video because spoilers. Main character number two is Glyn Newsol, the eldest crew member by one year and an already established friend to Klika. Everyone likes Glyn and considers him both handsome and a bit mysterious. He's absolutely the Aloy equivalent of a nerdy jock. I kept the angles and structures of his face rounded for a soft, gentle look, but chose to give his markings very clean lines and sharp points for masculinity and bold effect. If they look like 90s tribal tattoos, good. He's exactly the type of personality who would have eagerly covered himself in tribal tattoos in the 90s. I gave him a similar smiling mouth shape to Klika, but angled his muzzle markings down to tone down the expression. His coloring is a mix of warm and cool grays, giving him a neutral but not off-putting feel. His brown eyes are warm and captivating, and the white patch in the middle of his forehead marking is large and low, emphasizing his masculinity. Glynn is kind and generous towards his friends, but may feel a little unapproachable to strangers who aren't equally as confident as he is. He's definitely full of himself. He has the benefit of coming from a clan that had very little distrust of new souls, and the university tends to be a place of open-minded attitudes, so he really hasn't experienced the persecution many of his fellow new soul colleagues have. 
That said, he'll be the first to point out any perceived injustice he feels he's experiencing because of his new soul status. Many people think traveling beyond the solar system could weaken a soul's tie to the planet, and he believes that wholeheartedly. He's excited by the allure of this novel mission, but he's deeply afraid of becoming a lost soul and doesn't understand why Klika isn't. He's considered a very attractive man by Aloy's standards, and Klika absolutely has taken notice. Glynn is pleased to have the affection of such a pretty female crewmate for this upcoming lengthy mission, so he welcomes and encourages her affection, but he's not entirely sure he loves her or if he just likes her as a close friend. Either way, he definitely sees our third character as a rival simply because he's also male and potentially competition for Klika's affection while the three of them travel together. Glynn is the crew's navigator. Our third and final main character is Ward Newsol, youngest of the crew by a year. He is a quiet, gloomy, pessimistic character. I want him to be perceived as untrustworthy, so I gave him lots of sharp and narrow angles. His ears are more squared off, his jawline is pointy and more square, his mouth shape and muzzle mark Markings give him the impression of a frown. There's nothing soft or round about his appearance. To match his cold personality, I only used cool gray tones in his coat. I mixed blues into his green eyes to cool them down and make them stand out less. If Ward sticks out in a crowd, it's because he's unattractive, not because he's handsome or commanding. His white male marking is small and short, reflective of his meeker character. Ward is someone both Klika and Glynn knew of due to all being student employees of the faculty, but not someone either of them spent a lot of time with, and certainly not someone they would consider a friend. He prefers to be alone, so he doesn't mind at all. He's been selected as the crew's medic and chef, much to Glynn's dismay, as he's convinced Ward will poison them all before the mission is over. He just seems to be the sort who'd do that, you know? Rumor has it that time will reveal Ward's true identity as a dishonest, wandering soul, and the fact that Ward has never put much effort into denying it certainly hasn't helped change anyone's mind. Frankly, it's a little shocking that someone with such a reputation would be selected for a mission like this. Maybe Westland School is taking out the trash, so to speak? By the way, I don't have a working title for this novel yet. If you'd like to make a suggestion, feel free to do so. Which character do you like best and why? Let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't checked out the other Art Attic Science sci-fi videos yet, now is a great time to do that. Again, I've got them all linked in the description and in the pinned comment. If you have and you're wondering what to watch next, I've put some suggestions up on the left of of your screen. I upload art content with tips and tricks, product reviews, and other creative lifestyle topics every Tuesday and Thursday, so please come back for more. I'll see you on Sunday with a special mini Art Addicts collab, and then it's back to Tuesday and Thursday uploads next week. See you then!